most millennials are now in their early 30s. And in their early 30s, they look at the world and they look at their income and you can't buy a house. Mm -hmm. And the stock market is expensive. It's at all-time record valuations and the bond market. And all of the investment world is incredibly expensive. And so you're stuck where, okay, you start saving a few hundred dollars a month. The problem is, is there's no interest rates on your money. So it, it doesn't grow. But meanwhile, the cost of everything gets goes up more. So you're actually getting poorer. So you have to save more and more money and it becomes almost impossible. With the state of the global economy, it is clear that investing in the crypto space is one of the few options left for investors who wish to double their wealth. Though not without its volatile moments, such as the ongoing trend, the crypto market has proven to be very lucrative for investors. And it's only been around for 13 years. In a recent interview, Real Vision CEO and popular crypto enthusiast discusses the state of the investment world and why crypto assets remain the only viable option for investors. Pal talks about how low interest rates and increasing asset prices leave investors almost at a loss. Add that to the almost stagnant wages, then investing in assets like real estate properties becomes practically impossible for younger investors. The crypto expert also shares his insight on how worldwide crypto users could jump to over 1.5 billion users by 2024. As it is his practice, Pal breaks down some crucial information in the interview. So ensure you watch the video to the end and hit the like button. We love to hear from our viewers and subscribers, so ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Enjoy the video. The other journey was my crypto journey that started at the same time. So I went, went around the world trying to start the world's safest bank with a bunch of these kind of wealthy family offices. And it's a slightly hubristic thing to do to think I can go and start the world's safest bank, but I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and it proved pretty hard. You know, we went to Singapore, Switzerland, the US, all over the place trying to do this. And somebody, one of my clients tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, one of the answers to the entire financial system is Bitcoin. And this was 2012. Uh, and I started doing the work on it. And I first invested in it in 2013 and probably wrote the first ever piece on it. Um, the kind of macroeconomic analysis of Bitcoin uh, and where it could go and how to value it. Uh, and then cut forward that journey is that those two journeys combined. Uh, when we launched Real Vision, I think the first video I ever produced was about the role Bitcoin will play in the future financial system. That was 2014. And I kind of been part of that mission ever since is A, the system's broken, B, people need to know about it, and C, here's your solution. That's what I've been doing. So if anybody tells you they know what's going on or where it's going, they're lying. We don't. It's all new. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's the fastest adoption of any technology in all human history. So the internet was previously the fastest adoption of any technology. This is growing at twice the speed. So currently there's 300 million users of crypto worldwide. It's growing at 185% a year. So that means by next year, you're at 700 million people. Whoa. And then the year after that, you're at a billion and a half people. So What's amazing about it is, yes, it's amazing the technology and Web3 and all of the power it gives back to the individuals and all of the great stuff. But the big difference here is by owning the tokens, you're being part of the network as well. So you, you can not only get the benefits of this new system in a social sense, but you get it in an economic sense too, because it goes up in value. It's like, it's like finding Facebook back in 2010 and being given shares in Facebook, that everybody who used Facebook had shares. It would have made everybody rich. Mm -hmm. This is what this is doing, because you get the utility of all of this, and you get the financial benefits. In the video, Pal details how he started his crypto journey and his outlook for the space within the next two to three years. The macro expert and former hedge fund manager also discusses the issue of fiat currency debasement and some of the factors that are heightening the situation. Please listen to Raul Powell's explanation of why everyone should invest in the crypto space. I think the best example to use is for the millennial generation. So anybody's kind of under the age of 35, say 25 to 35. So most millennials are now in their early 30s. And in their early 30s, they look at the world and they look at their income and you can't buy a house. Mm -hmm. And the stock market is expensive. It's at all-time record valuations and the bond market and all of the investment world is incredibly expensive. And so you're stuck where, okay, you start saving a few hundred dollars a month. The problem is, is there's no interest rates on your money. So it, it doesn't grow. But meanwhile, the cost of everything gets goes up more. So you're actually getting poorer. So you have to save more and more money and it becomes 
almost impossible. So what is the factors playing out here? Why is this becoming so difficult? Well, we used to have higher interest rates, but because of this huge baby boom population who are retiring, plus the amount of debt in the system, interest rates have fallen for three, four decades now to now zero. So nobody gets any interest on their money, but we still have inflation. So the normal cost of goods normally has been running at like 2% a year. Doesn't sound a lot, but over time, you know, over a 10-year period, that ends up being 30 or percent or so of your money that your purchasing power that you've lost. So unless your income goes up or you save more and more and more every year, you're kind of behind the game. Mm. But then there's a bigger thing. So right now we're seeing high high inflation. We're seeing inflation at you know eight percent. So then you're really behind the game unless your salary goes up enough and you can start saving more. So everyone's behind the game. But then there's another crazy thing happened when interest rates hit zero and we got to 2008, that famous financial crisis the central banks started using something like the Federal Reserve being the central bank of the United States, started using a different way of trying to stimulate economic growth and save the banking system. And that was called quantitative easing, which is a fancy word to say, we're going to print more money. And when you print more money, you devalue the money. So to put it in layman's terms, if you are really thirsty and somebody says, well, I've got a bottle of water, I'll sell it to you for $5, you'll pay $5. If somebody gives you a million bottles, it's worth nothing to you. In fact, you pay somebody to get rid of it (laughs) because it's cluttered up your entire house. So things that are, if there's too much of something, it becomes valueless or less valuable. Mm -hmm. So one Mona Lisa is valuable, a million Mona Lisas, not valuable. And that's what's going on with money. They're debasing it, which means that they are lowering the value. Now, you don't see it very easily. All you see is that these asset prices keep going up. Every time they do this quantitative easing magic, the price of the stock market goes up, and the price of housing goes up, and the price of crypto goes up. And everyone's like, well, I can buy less of it now suddenly, but my income hasn't gone up. That's debasement. So you're now poorer, and you didn't realize how it happened, and you don't understand it, and it makes people angry because they don't understand why they can't get ahead. You know, wages over the last 50, 60 years haven't gone up. And the reason being is the millennials are in the workforce with their parents. So you've got the two biggest cohorts of people ever competing for jobs. And then there's globalization, i.e. Chinese workers and Indian workers and Mexican workers. And and then you've got technology. You've got to beat the robots and AI who are taking everybody's jobs. So wages don't go up very much. But the cost of all these assets keeps going up because people are devaluing the dollar. So that's why it's so hard to get ahead. And that forced me to look at, okay, how do we get around this? What can we do that's more sensible than what we were told? Because our parents were all told, save money. But they, were, they had 7%, 8% interest rates. So it, it adds up pretty quick. But this doesn't work. So what I did is I started looking at all of these assets and dividing them by the size of the central bank balance sheet. So how many, you know, how, how, basically how much the, 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 the Fed have printed. And what you found is the stock market didn't really do much. The normal, the S&P 500, the property market didn't do much. So they were just basically keeping in line with what was going on. So they protected your money, but you didn't make money. You didn't get richer. But when you looked at two things, they were the only things that made the real difference. One was technology stocks because we live in this technological age of incredible change. And so those things tend to do well. But the thing that beat them all, crypto did extraordinarily well, because what you've got is some forces at play. One is this digital scarcity, so you can't print more of it. So if something is being printed more of, it goes up in value versus a thing being printed. So that's great. But the blockchain technology was like a call option on the future financial system and the future of the internet. So you've got something that looks like a tech stock with adoption and has the safety of, let's say, gold. So that became like the holy grail. And then, you know, the speed of adoption, everything else is what's driven the price rises. So that's why crypto has been such a good savings vehicle. I made a, um, a video on this several years ago that's probably had three or four million views now on YouTube um, about the retirement crisis. And back then, I probably did this in 2015 or so. I said, you know, if you are a 30-year-old, your answer is to start saving in crypto because that is the big opportunity because the upside is so much larger. So yeah, that's the only way I see it that you can get ahead. 
or start your own business is the other way. There is no doubt that Raul Pal is one of the industry's brightest. He always presents such exciting prospects about the future of the crypto space. What part of Pal's interview did you find most interesting? Don't forget to drop your comments below and hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Thanks for watching.